Oh okay yeah that is why i think it is fairly clear because when we try putting the background it kind of blurs in blurs out as people move yeah, yeah. no this will not happen it will not happen with this see actually i don't know you can see my hand move yeah yeah we can yeah it will not happen oh okay so you put a green screen and behind you is it yeah behind you but that's all there is written and uh, it's some cheap stuff uh, it's it not even cost much i think this green screen they made Okay. Um, but okay. um, it's available. It's available. Okay. All you need is the green screen. Oh, okay. Uh, we are just Sandor, waiting. If you, if you need, I will um, get somebody to help you with it. Yeah, yeah. If you can, I mean, uh, we do a lot of training programs, so it may be something that uh, we oh, may. Oh, this is very simple to do. Yeah, yeah. I have never done this before. Actually, I have never interested. In, you know, I, I, I knew it can be done. I have done this long time back. Okay. But recently, uh, because Infosys Science Foundation Award is happening on December second. Okay. So they send okay. all the equipment. Oh, okay. Uh, we have, I, I think, Abhilash and others. Uh, we may want to admit all the participants. We just have only one or two minutes, and I am just expecting uh, Dr. Onikrishan sir to be online. So the moment he comes in, I think we'll start we up, just, sir. Sir, we have started admitting people. Ah, okay. this green screen is what movie people movie people use yes i agree so sir uh, just an fyi i think uh, there is uh, going to be a streaming that is going also happening in parallel so there may be some people joining in outside of zoom who are not able to uh, get connected they will get connected through the youtube uh, yeah. but there will be around 100 Uh, odd people will be able to get inside zoom so we are hoping to get more participants we are just seeing people coming in uh, and uh, dr unikrishan sir jane school in jm memorial school chatham kodunde and the school le or group of students could join cheyunnund അപ്പൊ അത് മലയാളത്തിന് കുറച്ചൊരു ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് കൊടുക്കണമെങ്കിൽ അവർ ആ ഒരു ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ടിൽ ഉള്ളവരാണ് ഓക്കെ നമുക്ക് നോക്കാം സാർ അറ്റ്ലീസ്റ്റ് കുട്ടികളുടെ അടുത്ത് ചോദ്യങ്ങൾ വേണമെങ്കിൽ മലയാളത്തിൽ ചോദിക്കാൻ പറയാനുസരിച്ച് അഭിലാഷ് ഈസ് ഉണ്ണി സർ ഓൺ ബോർഡ് ഉണ്ണി സർ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് ഇപ്പൊ ഇപ്പൊ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് ഉണ്ണി സർ ഹായ് ഗുഡ് ഈവനിങ് ഉണ്ണി സർ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് സന്തോഷ് യാ സർ സോ ഐ വുഡ് ലൈക്ക് ടു ജസ്റ്റ് ഹാൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഓവർ ടു യു ഐ വാസ് ജസ്റ്റ് being on the standby till you arrive so shubhlal sir has already come in so over to you sir hmm. shubhlal sir i would make a brief short introduction of you everybody knows you the formal title of the talk in the formal channel losing 
Yeah, go ahead, sir. I think you can go ahead. I think Abhilash has gone on mute. That is okay. You go ahead, please. Only, sir, you are on mute. Yeah. Abhilash, sir, all of you come. Only, sir, you are on mute. No, I am not on mute. Yeah, we can hear you now. We can hear you now. No worries. Abhilash, sir, all of you come. Infosys and the. ഫൗണ്ടർ എന്നുള്ള നിലയ്ക്ക് പരിചിതനാണ് എന്നുള്ള കാര്യത്തിൽ തർക്കമൊന്നുമില്ല എന്നാലും അദ്ദേഹത്തെ സംബന്ധിച്ച് നമ്മൾ ഒരു ഔപചാരികതയ്ക്ക് വേണ്ടി ഉറച്ച കാര്യങ്ങൾ നിങ്ങളുടെ ശ്രദ്ധയിലേക്ക് കൊണ്ടുവരികയാണ് അദ്ദേഹം ആലപ്പുഴക്കാരനാണ് മലയാളിയാണ് മഹാരാജ് കോളേജിലെ മഹാരാജ് കോളേജിൽ നിന്ന് അദ്ദേഹം ഫിസിക്സിൽ പോസ്റ്റ് ഗ്രാജുവേഷൻ മഹാരാജ് കോളേജിൽ നിന്നാണ് അദ്ദേഹം എടുത്തത് അതിനുശേഷം ബോസ്റ്റൺ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റിയിൽ കമ്പ്യൂട്ടർ സയൻസിൽ അദ്ദേഹം എം എസ് പൂർത്തീകരിച്ചു അതിനുശേഷമാണ് പ്രൊഫഷണൽ ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു കരിയറിലേക്ക് അദ്ദേഹം വരുന്നത് ഞങ്ങൾ ചെറുപ്പകാലത്ത് കേട്ടിട്ടുള്ള പട്നി കമ്പ്യൂട്ടേഴ്സ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഐ ടി രംഗത്തെ ഒരു പ്രമുഖ കമ്പനി എന്നുള്ള നിലയ്ക്ക് ഐ ടിയുമായിട്ട് ബന്ധപ്പെട്ട് വന്നിട്ടുള്ള എല്ലാ ആൾക്കാരും അറിയുന്ന ഒരു പേരാണ് ഓഫ് ഷോർ പ്രോജക്ട്സിന്റെ ഏരിയയിൽ അൻപതുകളിൽ അന്ന് ആ പട്നി കമ്പ്യൂട്ടേഴ്സിന്റെ ചുമതലക്കാരനായിട്ടാണ് അദ്ദേഹം ആദ്യമായിട്ട് ഒരു സോഫ്റ്റ്വെയർ എഞ്ചിനീയർ എന്നുള്ള നിലയ്ക്ക് ബോസ്റ്റണിൽ നിന്ന് വന്ന ശേഷം അദ്ദേഹം ആ കമ്പനിയിൽ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തു തുടർന്ന് അദ്ദേഹം നാരായണമൂർത്തി നന്ദൻ നിലക്കാനി ഗോപാലകൃഷ്ണൻ തുടങ്ങിയിട്ടുള്ള അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ സഹപ്രവർത്തകരുമായിട്ട് അദ്ദേഹം പട്നിയിൽ നിന്ന് പിന്നെ ഇൻഫോസിസ് തുടങ്ങുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള പ്രവർത്തനങ്ങളിലേക്ക് എത്തി ഇൻഫോസിസ് തുടങ്ങിയതിനു ശേഷം അതിനകത്ത് വളരെ നിർണായകമായിട്ടുള്ള ചുമതലകളാണ് അദ്ദേഹം വഹിച്ചിരുന്നത് അത് പിന്നെ നോർത്ത് അമേരിക്കയിലെ ക്ലയന്റ് റിലേഷൻഷിപ്പും പ്രോജക്ട് മാനേജ്മെന്റ് അടക്കമുള്ള ചുമതലകൾ അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ ഏറ്റവും പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട ഒരു കോൺട്രിബ്യൂഷൻ ആയിട്ട് പലപ്പോഴും ചൂണ്ടിക്കാണിക്കാറുള്ളത് ഒരു ഗ്ലോബൽ ഡെലിവറി മോഡൽ അദ്ദേഹം ബിൽഡ് ചെയ്തു എന്നുള്ളതാണ് അദ്ദേഹം ഇൻഫോസിസിൽ പല ചുമതലകളിലും സി ഒ ആയിട്ടും സി ഇ ഒ ആയിട്ടും മാനേജിംഗ് ഡയറക്ടറുമായിട്ടും അദ്ദേഹം പ്രവർത്തിച്ചിരുന്നു രണ്ടായിരത്തി പതിനാലിൽ അദ്ദേഹം ഇൻഫോസിസിലെ അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ സ്റ്റിന്റ് അദ്ദേഹം അവസാനിപ്പിച്ചു അതിനുശേഷം ചെറുപ്പക്കാരെയും സംരംഭകരെയും പ്രോത്സാഹിപ്പിക്കുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള ശ്രമങ്ങളിലും ഫൗണ്ടേഷൻ പ്രവർത്തനങ്ങളിലും വ്യാപൃതരായി എന്നുള്ളതാണ് അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ തുടർന്നുള്ള പിന്നെ അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ ഔദ്യോഗിക പ്രവർത്തനങ്ങളുടെ പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട പിന്നെ വ്യതിയാനം ആക്സിലോർ വെൻഡേഴ്സ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു വെഞ്ചർ ക്യാപിറ്റൽ കമ്പനി യങ് ഓൺടർപ്രണേഴ്സിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് അദ്ദേഹം സ്ഥാപിക്കുകയുണ്ടായി ഞങ്ങൾ കെഡിസ്കിന്റെ പുതിയ ടീം ഉണ്ടായി കഴിഞ്ഞപ്പോ ആട്ടിന്റെ പിന്നെ ഇൻഡക്ഷൻ പ്രോഗ്രാമിന് ഞങ്ങൾ പോയിരുന്ന ഒരു സ്ഥലം ഓക്സിലോർ പിന്നെ ഓക്സിലോർ വെൻഡേഴ്സിലാണ് അവിടെ പോയി ഞങ്ങൾ അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ ആക്സലറേറ്റർ സർവീസ് മുതലായ കാര്യങ്ങളും കാണുകയുണ്ടായി അദ്ദേഹം ഇപ്പോൾ വളരെ പിന്നെ ഒരുപാട് ആൾക്കാർ മെൻറ്റർ ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് അതുപോലെ തന്നെ സ്റ്റാർട്ടപ്സിന്റെ കരിയർ ബിൽഡിങ്ങിൽ നിർണായകമായിട്ടുള്ള പങ്ക് വഹിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് കേരളത്തിന്റെ വികസനത്തിൽ വളരെ താല്പര്യമെടുക്കുന്ന അദ്ദേഹം ഐ സി ടി അക്കാഡമിയുടെ ഇതിനു മുമ്പുള്ള ചെയർമാൻ ആയിരുന്നു അതോടൊപ്പം തന്നെ അദ്ദേഹം കെ ഡിസ്കിന്റെ കേരള ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് ഇന്നോവേഷൻ സ്ട്രാറ്റജി കൗൺസിലിന്റെ ബോർഡ് ഓഫ് ഗവർണേഴ്സിൽ ഒരാളാണ് മുഖ്യമന്ത്രിയുടെ ഐ ടി അഡ്വൈസറി ടീമിനകത്തും അദ്ദേഹം ഒരു പങ്ക് വഹിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് അങ്ങനെ നിർണായകമായിട്ടുള്ള ഒരുപാട് ചുമതലകൾ ദേശീയ അന്തർദേശീയ തലത്തിൽ വേൾഡ് എക്കണോമിക് ഫോറത്തിന്റെ ഗ്ലോബൽ അജണ്ട കൗൺസിൽ ഓൺ എമർജിംഗ് ടെക്നോളജീസ് തുടങ്ങിയിട്ടുള്ള നിരവധി പിന്നെ അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഐ ടി ആൻഡ് ഐ ടി എസ് ആൻഡ് ഇ കോമേഴ്സിന്റെ നാഷണൽ കമ്മിറ്റി കോൺഫെഡറേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യൻ ഇൻഡസ്ട്രീസിന്റെ അങ്ങനെയുള്ള നിരവധി ചുമതലകൾ അദ്ദേഹം വ്യാപൃതനാണ് അപ്പൊ അദ്ദേഹത്തെ നമ്മുടെ ആറാമത് ടെക് ടോക്കിലെ സംസാരത്തിന് വേണ്ടി കേഡിസ്കിന്റെ കൊച്ചു കൂട്ടുകാര് ായിട്ട് സംസാരിക്കുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി അദ്ദേഹം തയ്യാറായി 
വന്നിട്ടുള്ളതിൽ ഏറെ സന്തോഷമുണ്ട് അദ്ദേഹത്തിലേക്ക് ഞാൻ എന്റെ ഔപചാരികമായിട്ടുള്ള ചുമതല നിർവഹിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ അദ്ദേഹത്തിലേക്ക് കൈമാറി താങ്ക് സർ താങ്ക് യു good evening everyone good afternoon actually everyone um, it's a pleasure for me to talk to all of you um, thank you for giving me this opportunity i think it's a wonderful idea to have talks like this which will energize and encourage youngsters um, who are in the um, who are in the network so i think it's a wonderful idea so i thought i will do a very short speech and then go for question answer so during the question answer probably i can speak more in malayalam uh, whereas during the speech i will probably stick to english for most part um, so of course you heard the introduction i was uh, one of the founders of infosys uh, infosys was founded by seven people in 1981 um there was a slight um, um difference uh, i actually did my masters after while working second masters while working um around the globe with infosys uh, so 1981 when infosys was founded um you know the world was very different so i asked andosh today morning um who is the audience and what are the aspirations of the current audience and sandosh said that um, at least 50% of the people who are on this audience on this um, um, in this uh, in this audience will have entrepreneurial aspirations that means many of them will um, take a path of um, creating um, something unique uh, being an entrepreneur and um, being on your own rather than getting employed uh, which is a standard approach so in 1981 this was a completely different world entrepreneurship was not even a word which was in the dictionary in 1981 there were no uh, venture capitalists there were no um, tech accelerators there was no um, um legal framework in fact um, we lived in a world where um, uh, it was a world of constraints today uh, it uh, you are in a world of opportunities whereas the world in which we lived in 1980 was a world of constraints there was license raj there was fair regulation all of this uh, were more constraints than constructive to building an enterprise things have drastically changed over the years today in my mind we live in a world of a world of opportunities a world of abundance i i used to say this in 80s 79 when i passed out my biggest challenge was to find a job whereas today most of you the biggest challenge is choosing a job which job should i choose which of the offers which i got will be um, interesting to me in the long run that is your challenge whereas i came out of a when i came out of college the biggest challenge which i had was to find a job so this is completely different world and the new world has lot of benefits you have on the entrepreneurial ecosystem it has become socially accepted to be an entrepreneur you have um, enough people in the system not enough but just enough people in the system who have gone through this journey who is willing to mentor you who is willing to advise you who is willing to help you there are organizations like axlor which um, has a program which could be <coughs> of great interest to the entrepreneurs there is a venture capital ecosystem in place there is enough capital available right and world over i think we have been recognized as a set of people as a society which can produce innovation which can deliver value to its customers so it's a completely different world but at the same time this world has its own challenges so i thought i will just touch upon them because when you take this journey <clears throat> the challenges which i see in today's world is relevant to you more relevant to you 
Number one, I find that there is abundant availability of capital. Right? And most founders tend to spend a lot of time raising capital. Right? Which is a must because you need to have funding to build something. But I firmly believe that capital is not a substitute for innovation. That when Infosys came around, um, there was no capital available. So Infosys focused very much on speed and innovation. So the global delivery model was created, which is completely innovative, far ahead of its time uh, in 80s, in 85. It took almost 20 years. Um, not 20, about 15 years for it to get accepted worldwide. Infosys reacted with very, very high agility, very high speed, um, very high levels of energy. So I find that when I deal with, uh, <clears throat> work with many of these startups, because there is abundant availability of capital, the frugality is lost and the focus is in raising capital rather than creating innovation sometimes, right? So as entrepreneurs, you need to remember that the key differentiator which you will create is through innovation and speed. So this is one big challenge for today's entrepreneurs because there is capital available, it can easily get substituted for speed and innovation. And that is something which all of you need to keep in mind. So talking about global delivery model, which was created in the 80s, it was, as I said, far ahead of time. It was based on two fundamental ideas that one was service industry will get um, globalized. And second was technology will become ubiquitous. These were two fundamental ideas on which Infosys was created. And the global delivery model was, a, uh, was an execution model supported by these two fundamental um, thoughts. Both happened over a period of time. Uh, the service industry got globalized and technology became ubiquitous. First part, the first one, service industry getting globalized, Infosys played a very big part. The second piece, technology became ubiquitous, actually happened. Not only Infosys, many other people have contributed to, contributed to that, uh, that um, transformation. So the first thing I talk about, talked about was this, um, capital is not a substitute for speed and innovation. The second point I wanted to make was that um, Infosys was built on a strong foundation of corporate governance. It was built on a strong foundation of ethical values. It was built on a strong foundation of um, um, on human capital, right? So if you look at the history of Infosys, Infosys got listed in 1999. For, for many, many years, Infosys was rated number one in corporate governance in India. A lot of the innovative ideas for corporate governance came out of Infosys practices. Infosys always believed in a, um, in, in a set of strong values, fairness, honesty, transparency, customer focus, non-hierarchy, meritocracy. Right? These were all core values which Infosys believed in. So Infosys, as I said, was built on a very strong foundation of corporate governance on ethical values and human capital. Infosys used to recruit um, 15,000 to 30,000 people from the campus. Mr. Murthy used to say that at five o'clock, the value of the Infosys is zero because everyone has gone home. Next day morning, when everybody is back in the office, that's when the value gets created again. And that is that is laid the strong foundation for Infosys. And that is how Infosys became such a big, large corporation. It took 23 years for Infosys to reach the first 23 months to get to the next second, second, um, second to $1 billion. So the foundation is extremely important, right? Because of this foundation, 
I think Infosys had a lot of people who stayed with them for a very, very long time. The founders itself, I think, you if you, you can go through the history and see, is there any other corporation where the founders have stayed together for um, 35 years? It rarely happens. In fact, in today's world, whenever people walk into my room, I find two founders coming into my room talking about a wonderful idea. They're all excited. They, they believe that this will solve a major problem. The first question I try to figure out is that how long will these two people stay together? In fact, the more successful they are, they, get, it, it, they break up much faster. The moment there is um, growth, there is uh, money, there is um, power, of course, there will be conflict between the founders. If you're not successful also, you break up. So the foundation is extremely important. And I believe that uh, because we are in a hurry today, because the market is so competitive and because in, we are in a hurry today, many of the founders today tend to take shortcuts. And that is not a sustainable approach. Um, I have seen that um, the situations where that happens, the growth stalls, um, the, um, the transparency is lost, the energy is lost. So it is very important to make sure that you have a strong foundation based on ethical values, on human capital, uh, which will stand the test of time. So that's the second most important point I wanted to leave behind. Third one is uh, again related to the first point. Because there is abundance of funding, we tend to take a lot of funding. So as I said, when Infosys was getting created, there was no availability of funding, which means the cash for the growth, the cash which was required to create growth had to be funded internally. So Infosys generated its own cash, right? and funded its own growth. It took a long time because uh, it, you know, it couldn't generate so much of cash. Um, uh, it took many, many years to generate the required amount of cash to create that level of growth. And over the years, that's why probably Infosys took um, 23 years to get to a billion dollars because if in today's world, if you can actually infuse a hundred million dollars as investment, you can probably get to a billion dollars in five years. But in Infosys world, that was not true. Funding was not available. The cash was being generated internally. It took that, and the foundation was put in place, but it took 23 years to get to the first $1 billion. So in today's world, when you get funded and when you are not generating cash internally, you keep getting funded over and over again, there is an agency problem. And this is a dilemma which most of you who get into this entrepreneurial track will face. The moment you have people who fund and there's a conflict between your idea, your um, purpose of creating the organization versus the people who have funded, you have a decision to make. And most often what happens is that the capital will win the race. So, so you find it hard to stay true to the purpose of the uh, purpose of the enterprise. Right? True, uh, stay true to the idea and the innovation which you wanted to create. And many at times you may also be interested in creating, creating a social impact. So, the moment there is um, capital coming in, the moment there is getting capital is coming in to run your operations, you will run into this conflict of interest. So that is another important thing to watch out because slowly, steadily, you will move away from the, the true purpose, true idea behind which you created the 
start up or the, and and plan to build on it so three things i find it is very different today one is um, um uh, you know which we need to watch out one is that making sure that you don't consider capital as a substitute for speed and innovation the only way to create a um, sustainable profitable enterprise is to have speed and innovation secondly foundation is extremely important shortcuts may work in the short term but in the long term 99% 100% of the time it will fail and the foundation has to be based on ethical values higher level highest levels of corporate governance and a strong human capital focus and thirdly you should watch out for the agency problem agency problem will take you away from the true purpose so either you make sure that you have cash being generated within the organization sooner or later the sooner the better or make sure that your investors are willing to understand and willing to work with you in the same direction as the enterprise or the start which you have created now um i will make one more point and 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 stop i get asked this question very recently that um, you know with this covid pandemic which is going on and the world being very different than what it was about 9 months back what are the new opportunities which you see i see a tremendous amount of opportunities when we emerge out of this pandemic number 1 we had lost our focus on basic sciences for a period of time right we have become um, so if you look at a lot of the innovation which happens it, it is in consumer tech in fintech in enterprise tech in deep tech in some sense our investment into basic sciences had come down over a period of time globally it is not even uh, in india because we are taken for granted that we know we we have come to know everything which we needed to know about um, um, about the basic science the areas of basic science whether it is physics chemistry biology mathematics and i clearly believe that um, when we come out of this pandemic and i, I believe it's already happening there will be a um, resurgence of investments going into basic sciences and i also believe that most of the innovations which will come out for the new world will be at the boundaries boundaries of physics and chemistry boundaries of computer science and biosciences uh, boundaries of um, um, you know chemistry and mathematics so this will create a lot of opportunities which are new which have not existed before whether it is um, um creating innovation using basic science whether it is creating innovation at the boundaries and i think those kinds of innovation will require a different kind of thinking it will require a long term thinking it will require a um um you know academic thinking it will require participation from academics and other research institutions to create such innovation so i clearly believe that that would be a big opportunity coming out of this pandemic second point i wanted to make was that this this whole pandemic has fundamentally questioned a lot of assumptions which we used to have before we used to believe that the only way to get healthcare was to go and meet the doctor we used to believe that the only way to educate a child was to send a child to school we used to believe that the only way to have this event was for me to be in your in a room with 100 of you these were all assumptions which we may used to make these were all things which were never questioned before and i think all of those um, assumptions have been relooked today i am on board meetings um, across the globe which would have never been accepted before uh, on a video conference i meet my doctor on a um, you know on zoom my foundation runs a school which is completely on online 
so i am not saying that when you when this pandemic is over all of those things are going to continue exactly at that same level of intensity but we will move into a hybrid world whether it is in education whether it is in healthcare whether it is in um, um in any other area whether it is in retail so there will be tremendous opportunities for digitalization as well as um building new models if you look at healthcare alone 70% of our doctors are in urban areas and 70% of our population is in rural areas historically we have always always struggled with delivering quality healthcare to rural population i believe that this will create enough amount of it's already has created telemedicine will become a um, standard operating practice in healthcare schools will go back to not being normal because education is a contact sport which means you need to be with the teacher it is not it's a, it's a, not only about knowledge it's about values it's about um, uh, learning other social skills but i was telling my um, my people whatever you do at least saturday class so they conduct saturday classes for 9th and 10th and 11th and 12th something like that i told them saturday class you keep digital for five days they coming to school it's a long commute let's just make sure that one day they are studying from home so there are a number of opportunities which will come out in various um, areas and many of these areas will um, get uh, get transformed manufacturing is also another area where i expect um, serious disruption i i believe you know we were extremely comfortable with manufacturing being done in one part of the world and consumption being done in another part of the world right everything was getting manufactured in china and we used to just consume it all over the world whether it is india or us or anywhere else i think that will also shift pandemic has shown us that you know we need to de-risk that model we need to have local manufacturing again it will be a hybrid model it is not that all manufacturing is going to move to the local um, you know local area it is about having a hybrid model where manufacturing will happen in different parts of the world and at least part of the goods will be manufactured locally so i believe that when i when this is all all over and we come into the new world there will be strong digitalization happening in various areas like healthcare education um supply chain there will be shift in manufacturing each of this will create um, opportunities for innovation and each of this will create opportunities for creating value creating wealth and doing um, smart startups so in a sense the especially the people who are just leaving college and looking at this um, space the entrepreneurial space i think there are abundant amount of opportunities um it is important for you to um, come up with an idea which has value to the customer and also please remember an idea by itself does not create value actually execution of that idea creates value that's something which you always need to remember that is why the axel or tag line is where innovation meets execution so with this uh, let me conclude and um, i will um, take questions uh, uh, questions now thank you very much hello thank you tribulal thank you for the very thought provoking <laughs> speech that you have made uh, tribulal sir adeham uh, infosys thodangiya kaalavum adine shesham 
ഇപ്പോഴുള്ള കാലവും തമ്മിലുള്ള താരതമ്യത്തിൽ നിന്നാണ് അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ പ്രഭാഷണം ആരംഭിച്ചത് അന്ന് അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ബെഞ്ചു ഫൈനാൻസും ഇപ്പോഴുള്ള ഇന്നോവേഷൻ മോഡൽസിന്റെ ഇന്നോവേഷനുള്ള ഇപ്പോഴുള്ള സാധ്യതകളും സംവിധാനങ്ങളൊന്നും ഇല്ലാത്തൊരു കാലത്ത് എങ്ങനെയാണ് അവര് ഹലോ നിസ ഹലോ നിസർ കേൾക്കാമോ ആ എനിക്ക് എനിക്ക് കേൾക്കാം ഹലോ ഹലോ സാറിന്റെ വോയിസ് ഇടയ്ക്ക് ബ്രേക്ക് ആവുന്നുണ്ട് സാർ ഒന്ന് സന്തോഷ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് സന്തോഷ് ഒന്ന് ഹാൻഡിൽ ചെയ്യും എനിക്ക് ഇവിടെ ഇവിടെ എന്തോ ഒരു ചെറിയ കണക്ഷൻ പ്രോബ്ലം ഉണ്ട് ഓക്കെ ഓക്കെ ലെറ്റ് മീ ലെറ്റ് മീ ടേക്ക് ഇറ്റ് അപ്പ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഹാസ് കം സർ ഷിബ്ല സർ യു ആർ ഏബിൾ ടു ഹിയർ മീ യെസ് ഓക്കെ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഇസ് ഫ്രം അരുൺ കൃഷ്ണ സർ വാട്ട് ആർ ദ ചലഞ്ചസ് യു സി ഇൻ മാനേജിങ് എ ലാർജ് ഓർഗനൈസേഷൻ വിത്ത് സച്ച് എ ഡിസ്ട്രിബ്യൂട്ടഡ് വർക്ക് ഫോഴ്സ് റിമോട്ട്ലി in post covid scenario so interestingly enough that is um, pre covid and post covid those challenges are somewhat similar right because large organizations uh, which are globally distributed um, require a um, very a, a clear uh, way of um, management so if i look back at the infosys uh, experience i think there are two or three important things number one infosys had very very strong value system which was put in place it was extremely well articulated so whether you are in china or in us or in um, in south africa or in egypt the values of infosys was something which we um, inculcated very very strongly so it was about being fair being honest being, uh, being customer centric being um, transaction oriented so i think that laid the foundation for a common behavior across the globe so you could be a chinese working in china you could be an american working in us but because we had articulated the value system very very clearly that allowed us to have a common ethos common culture across the organization and uh, anybody who was joining infosys used to come to india for a period of 2 um, to 3 weeks as part of their induction to understand the organization understands its um, values and behaviors so that create the common bond i think that will continue to happen i think the post covid uh, again post pre covid they used to come to india probably post covid you will be doing it on different uh, um, channels of communication whether it is through uh, zoom calls or google meets or whatever that is that is that is one second infosys had a very strong set of sops standard operating practices that is also important when you are so distributed so these standard operating practices were not only on paper they were implemented using a strong is system so infosys had a system which was making sure that whatever you are doing you are doing it as per the sop the standard operating practice that again makes it more repeatable more uh, traceable and because it is on a common framework common set of applications being applied across the globe that allowed us to have very very high level of uh, transparency and visibility across the globe so i think the number one was making sure that this culture is uniform culture is articulated culture is inculcated and the violations of culture are actually uh being highlighted and um, and um, you know the rewards go to people who have who go in uh, who adopt the culture and the ones who, when the situations where the culture is not being practiced there is some penalty second is making sure that there is a very strong um, um 
standard operating procedure so in process and iso 9000 certification cmm level 4 certification cmm level 5 certification md number of certifications one may think why all these certifications it does bring in commonality of um, practices across the globe and third there was a very strong foundation of systems which were put in place to create make sure that you are following the standard operating practice and also to make sure that there is extremely high level of transparency and extremely high level of um, uh, visibility for example infosys used to close the books 9 days after the quarter that means it used to publish the results on 10th that is 9 days after the quarter this is after consolidating everything across the world so i hope i um, i answered you three points sir sir thank you uh, i am trying to mix some uh, interesting question and some serious questions also so one interesting question that came is uh, sir who is your role model so i am i am not a person who believe that there is a perfect person to be a role model um, to be a role model but luckily in my life i had the privilege of um, working with um, extremely talented extremely strong uh, great set of people right for example when i look at mr murthy um, he would be my role model for um, um, building an organization chris would be a role model for creating innovation mohan das pai would be a role model for um, finance so i have had the privilege of learning from so many different people uh, and um, you um, i am also a person who believes that you can learn something from anybody and you cannot learn everything from one person so i am at the privilege of um, having number of people in my life who were great at doing what they were doing um, and i had the ability to learn from them at the same time i have learned something from almost everyone okay interesting sir thank you uh, another question uh, sir will the institutions be an enabler in the new normal such as uh, when they meant institution government what's your view on it i think um, the governments are faced with the reality that there is a, there is a um, new normal and i think it requires um, uh, change but see the, there's always one thing if you look at um, so the first time i came across the e-commerce was in 1996 when i was with sun microsystems and that is just when internet was you know becoming alive when the netscape was launched and i used to think that you know a lot of people used to think including myself that okay the world is going to fundamentally change overnight amazon took probably 15 to 20 years to happen uber took 15 years to happen 20 years to happen so the social change the technology has changed very fast the society doesn't change that fast the social change will always lag behind the technology changes and the society, government is in many ways a reflection of the society so they will change but it will be slower than the technology changes okay a uh, question sir uh, do you think that the future of india continues to be in the it field um that is uh, in my mind not a great idea because i think a country like india which has a billion plus people and a very young um, generation it is impossible for one industry to support the growth support employment and um, and and meet everyone's aspiration a country like india requires multiple growth uh, engines right uh, it is can only be one of them and there are a lot of areas where we can grow for example logistics and retail today um that is an area of growth agriculture is an area of growth retail is an area of growth um healthcare is an area of growth um, so we as a country like india requires um, because if you look at supply chain management if you look at logistics if you look at retail uh, whether it is online offline or union um, you know uh, omni channel there is a long way to go for uh, go for us so um, a country like india need multiple growth uh, growth engines um, and and we should have multiple growth engines so i really don't believe it will be the only area for growth okay i i think that's a great uh, great input sir uh, moving on uh, there is a question about uh, how can we raise capital this is more of an advice uh, 
for a new enterprise if we cannot find an investor who is not having similar ideas of yours any advice so i think um, you know in today's world if you can find an idea which can create value see the when, when people come to axelor the best thing which we ask them to do is to figure out what problem are you trying to solve and who is going to pay for that these are two important questions which you need to answer right if you are trying to solve a problem you need to be clear what problem what business problem are you trying to solve and then who will be act, who is willing to pay for that uh, solution if you have those two answers most often you will get funded right because funders are looking for large problems which can be solved where you will get paid right unless you are in the social sector that's a completely different sector to be in there you are not looking for funding they are looking for grants okay so it is important to the funding is a big validation by itself it is not something um um uh, trivial right because the funding will happen if somebody funds you that means they have done a set of validations to make sure that you have a problem it's a large enough problem um it is probably a global problem you have a solution which will and usually i tell people to um, check whether this is there are three dimensions to dimensions of the solution either you have to reduce the price by 100 times or you have to increase the quality by 100 times or you have to reduce the time required by 100 times the factor is very important if you are going to have a solution which is going to make marginal improvement in any of these dimensions quality cost and time then it is not a great idea to pursue and if you are aiming for 100 times you will eventually get 50 you are still golden so it's important to have a problem which which is of substantial size where you are going to make an improvement in any one of these dimensions time quality and cost in a three three digit fashion that should be at least the hypothesis and i'm sure that funding will happen okay so a lot of questions are coming i know we also have a time limit so i am just uh, trying to uh, browse through some of the things or uh, jodyam vannathu kutti ayirna pol sir school life enjoy edittundo i am sure this would have come from a child <laughs> so in the school life in the school life at the end of school life actually my and parents rendu veru achana amma work cheyirunnu achana amma rendu veru government service la irunnu so avare they get transferred avare transfer angotu ingotu ko transfer avana undu pala edutha ana padichu finally njan alapil ana padichu gd school la അത് കഴിഞ്ഞ് എസ് ഡി കോളേജ് അലപ്പി അത് കഴിഞ്ഞ് മഹാരാജസ് അത് കഴിഞ്ഞ് എസ് എൻ കോളേജ് പോയി അത് കഴിഞ്ഞ് ബോസ്റ്റൺ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി എന്റെ സ്കൂൾ ലൈഫ് സോ സോ അയാളെ യുനോ സോ ടീച്ചേഴ്സ് മേഡ് എ ഹ്യൂജ് ഡിഫറൻസ് ഇൻ മൈ ലൈഫ് റൈറ്റ് ദ ടീച്ചേഴ്സ് മേഡ് എ ഹ്യൂജ് ഹ്യൂജ് ഡിഫറൻസ് ഇൻ മൈ ലൈഫ് സ്കൂളിലാണെങ്കിലും അത് കഴിഞ്ഞ് ഈ ബോസ്റ്റൺ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ആണ് അത് കൂടാതെ തന്നെ എന്റെ ആദ്യത്തെ എംപ്ലോയ്മെന്റ് ബോംബെ ഇലക്ട്രിക് സപ്ലൈ ആൻഡ് ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ട് വെച്ചാണ് അവിടെയും എനിക്കൊരു ഒന്ന് രണ്ട് ഗ്രേറ്റ് ആബ്സൊല്യൂട്ട്ലി ഗ്രേറ്റ് ടീച്ചേഴ്സ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു സോ എന്റെ സ്കൂൾ ലൈഫ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് വെരി മച്ച് ഡിപ്പെൻഡ് ഓൺ ദ ടീച്ചേഴ്സ് ബീങ് വെരി ഓണസ്റ്റ് സോ ഐ ഡിഡ് എക്സ്ട്രീംലി വെൽ വെൻ യു നോ ഐ കുഡ് കണക്ട് വിത്ത് ദ ടീച്ചർ ഓർ ദ ടീച്ചർ കുഡ് കണക്ട് വിത്ത് മീ അതർവൈസ് ഐ ഹാഡ് എ ബിറ്റ് ഓഫ് എ സ്ട്രഗിൾ ഓക്കെ <laughs> that's an interesting response okay uh, let me move on uh, do you a uh, couple of questions on infosys uh, perhaps infosys foundation do do infosys foundation support uh, young innovators like us is one question so infosys foundation i have no connection with infosys foundation anymore uh, even when i was with infosys foundation was a separate entity by itself infosys hardly um, got involved in the foundation activities other than funding it um infosys foundation is a philanthropic foundation it doesn't fund any startup or any entrepreneur they are very focused on um, um you know they they build hospitals they build schools they give um, you know money for um charitable organizations so it's a full philanthropic organization okay uh does infosys the next question is does infosys has any schemes for supporting entrepreneurs please remember i left infosys 6 years back 
okay uh, so my answers are out, outdated uh, so it's not really correct for me to answer okay uh one uh, interesting question for you what is your future plan what is my future plan that's a very interesting question um so i have a extremely busy life um uh today even today so um after i left infosys um chris and maybe started axel or so that takes up a lot of my time then um, my wife runs all the philanthropic activities so that uh, i am the technical support for all her activities so um, my job is to make sure that all the technology behind her activities uh, are in place um, so um, her um, so she runs a huge um, um, so she runs a very large uh, higher education scholarship program in the, in india uh, so she will get about 30000 applications every year this year i the documents that can be obtained cataloged prioritized then they do they do an online selection finally they will end up selecting 1000 people for a scholarship which will last for 7 years each person will get scholarship for 7 years so i have to i i support her technically on her activities i am on the board of um, multiple universities outside india i am on the board of a few things inside india so that takes up my time more importantly i also look after my family office so i have a pretty much a very busy pc life i can i will continue to focus on my areas of interest which will be predominantly three things number one is the um, entrepreneurial space and i will do that through axelor and number two is the philanthropy space um, so um last two years um, i was involved in building a platform called shiksha logam for leadership development in um, k12 education and i think it is now being um, um, you know is now it is available in 10 states now and um, we have probably five lakh uh, school leaders on the platform so it's a philanthropic side so i'll continue to focus on that and plus my uh, family office okay that's quite a lot uh, in your plate uh, i will take two more yes. questions maybe very quickly sir uh, i thought this is very interesting one is if infosys were to start in 2020 and if you are spearheading uh, would you do anything different if so what it is so number one hindsight has no value please remember this in hindsight you can say all kinds of things generally it doesn't mean anything number two i doubt very much whether you can start an infosys the way it happened in 20 1981 in 2020 i told you infosys had the legs you know infosys took 23 years to get to the first billion dollars today if you start something and you are not a billion dollars within 5 years you are nowhere so everything will be different today like everything it's a completely different world and everything will be different today um many things are common so the common things will be making sure that the foundation is in place making sure that you have global aspirations making sure that you focus on speed and innovation making sure that you have the best talent in place but other than that the entire architecture of the organization the speed of execution um the the competitive landscape everything will be different um today so it will be a completely different set of strategies okay very well said sir uh, last question for you uh, i think it we with this we will end we, even though there are a lot of questions still pouring in i'm sorry i can't take so many questions probably we will take this up and if time permits sir you may want to respond it offline so the last question is what advice would you give to uh, your own 20 year self if you were to give something essentially i think we are asking what is your advice to us it must have come from a 20 year old person right 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 see when i was 20 year old um um the all of us when we are young um we are we have enormous amount of energy um 
enormous amount of uh, passion, enormous amount of tenacity. Uh, we have all of those things, but we do lack experience. Right? There is one thing which the 20 year old does not have is uh, experience. Um, but, you know, there is, there is, um, um, but we find when you're young, we find difficult, we find it very difficult to take advice or seek advice uh, in my mind, because um, when I was young, uh, probably I was hot headed and uh, found it hard to uh, Take uh, take advice. I will tell you a small story. Actually, in '83, I was here in back in India after uh, my first um, stint in US, and I was actually running a computer center in uh, in um, Bangalore in the micro premises. And uh, I used to report to Mr. Murthy at that point in time. Running a computer center, I was only '83. I was only about 27, 27. 28, 27, 28. Um, and um, I was a pretty young and inexperienced. And this is a big responsibility. And Mr. Murthy used to come around every week or every um, every week. And uh, he would uh, review with me, you know, all the things, what is happening. And, and eventually at the end of the review, there will be some 10 action items, uh, uh, you know, which are supposed to be done before the next week. And I was pretty good at doing my job. I was uh, pretty hardworking and committed and all those things. And I will get eight of them done. Because I have not written it down, I'll forget the last two. Right? And I will be looking forward to my next meeting thinking that, um, you know, I will be congratulated. I will be appreciated. Mr. Murthy will walk in invariably and ask me the last two. Right? And I would have forgotten them too because I have not written anything now. So, Santosh, I, I got, I lost connection, Santosh. Yeah, that's, what did, that's okay, sir. Yeah. What did I, you hear last? I, uh, in between, we also had a bit of a problem. So you talked about uh, in, uh, Mr. Narayan Murthy coming in and invariably asking something where ah, you know, right. that had not it. Right, right. So finally, Mr. Murthy told me that, Shibu, please uh, get a diary. And I took that advice. And I got a diary. And actually, Santosh knows this. I am considered as one of the most disciplined person in the in the industry. Not in the industry overall, right? Because I am always on time. I am always prepared. I always write down. I, um, you know, I am um, I'm, I'm considered as very, very disciplined. And uh, that has done great for my life and my career. Being disciplined. Um, being... Um, prepared, being on time. As most youngsters, um, and even myself as a youngster, um, found it very hard. I always thought that I could remember everything. Why should I write down anything? Um, I always thought that being five minutes late is what is the big deal? You know, Five minutes is five minutes, but you are forgetting that 20 people are waiting for you. That is actually not five minutes, 20 into five. That is 100 minutes. Um, or being prepared. Um, I would walk into um, meetings without being prepared. I learned that, you know, that is not only a waste of my time, everybody else's time. And I lose uh, respect. So I think as an youngster, the advice I would give it is actually number one, now that I started out, number one is to be disciplined. Discipline uh, is something which spans every activity in your life, right? It is not one single thing. It is about being on time. It is about being prepared. It is about being focused. It is about... Um, being punctual. So being disciplined and as a youngster, youngster, 
I don't believe I was disciplined. I was lucky to get away with it, and then I was lucky also to get the advice and take it. Not only getting the advice, taking it. So that is one advice I will give to my twenty-year-old. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. I think uh, that was a, a well-rounded answer, and thank you so much for your uh, patient time and uh, patiently explaining to our participants about the various questions and various aspects of doing business. Uh, I think the important takeaway uh, has also been conveyed uh, to the youngsters. So thanks a lot uh, for that, sir. I really wanted to check whether Unni sir is still uh, online, so that I can. Pass it back to sir for the ah, final. Handosh, 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 thank you. I am yeah. online. So, the Sandosh on the Shibilal sir on the very interesting at the one Sambhasham I read. Uh, I am Wikipedia la na sir na profile at the one. I am Sandosh sir profile I check. I am one very short time. The sir na payambo. Perfect details one of one long time. Wikipedia na that na I made certain mistakes. I am. വളരെ രസകരമായിരുന്നു സാറ് ഇൻഫോസിസിൽ നിന്ന് തുടങ്ങി ഒരു സ്ഥാപനം കെട്ടിപ്പടുത്തിട്ടുള്ള എന്റെ അനുഭവത്തിൽ നിന്ന് പിന്നെ ഇന്നത്തെ ലോകത്തെ നോക്കിക്കാണുകയും ഇന്നത്തെ ലോകത്തിന്റെ ചലഞ്ചസിനെ സംബന്ധിച്ചുമാണ് സാർ സംസാരിച്ചത് അതിനുശേഷം പോസ്റ്റ് കോവിഡ് സിറ്റുവേഷനിലേക്ക് എന്തൊക്കെയാണ് വരുന്ന മാറ്റങ്ങൾ എന്നുള്ളത് അദ്ദേഹം അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ വിഷൻ എന്താണെന്ന് അദ്ദേഹം പ്രസന്റ് ചെയ്തു വളരെ ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റിംഗ് ആയിരുന്നു വളരെ ഇന്ററാക്റ്റീവ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു സെഷൻ ഒരുപാട് യങ്സ്റ്റേഴ്സ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള പങ്കെടുത്ത ആൾക്കാർക്കൊക്കെ തന്നെ സാറ് സംസാരിച്ചിട്ടുള്ളത് വളരെ കാര്യമായിട്ട് ഇന്റേർണലൈസ് ചെയ്ത് അവരെ ഹൃദയത്തിൽ സൃഷ്ടിച്ചു എന്നുള്ള കാര്യത്തിൽ താല്പര്യമില്ല ഒരുപാട് ചോദ്യങ്ങൾ വന്നിരുന്നു എല്ലാ ചോദ്യങ്ങൾക്കും നിർഭാഗ്യവശാൽ നമുക്ക് ഈ സമയക്കുറവ് കൊണ്ട് നമുക്ക് അതിനോട് മുഴുവൻ റെസ്പോണ്ട് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റിയില്ല പക്ഷെ നിശ്ചയമായിട്ടും കുറെ ഏറെ കാര്യങ്ങൾ അദ്ദേഹം റിഫ്ലക്ട് ചെയ്തു എന്നുള്ളതിൽ ഏറെ സന്തോഷമുണ്ട് നമ്മുടെ വളരെ ഫലപ്രദമായിട്ടുള്ള ഈ ടെക്ടോക്കിൽ പങ്കെടുത്തതിന് ഷിബിലാൽ സാറിനോട് പ്രത്യേകം നന്ദി പറയുന്നു അതോടൊപ്പം ഇതിൽ പങ്കെടുത്തിട്ടുള്ള മുഴുവൻ കൊച്ചു കൂട്ടുകാരും അധ്യാപകരോടും പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് നന്ദി പറയുന്നു വീണ്ടും അടുത്ത ബുധനാഴ്ച അടുത്ത സെഷനിലേക്ക് Thank you sir thank you bye